talk about one of the greatest players in the history of the game, greatest coaches and one of the greatest personalities. It is our pleasure tonight to welcome Lee Matthews to Footy Classified. G'day, Lee. Nice to join you, Ed. Thanks. But, uh, how'd you enjoy watching those highlights? Oh, uh, yeah, well... Anyone would be happy to have one of those. <laughs> <laughs> Started in black and white, finished in colour. What they say about uh, memories are like junk food. Tastes good at the time, but they don't nourish you much. What we all want is what's available <laughs> late Saturday afternoon. Hey, yeah. tell me, what, what is September and, and October on occasions for you? What does it mean to you? Uh, well, I've always said the favourite part of uh, the world for me is the MCG because I've had some fantastic memories there. So, yeah, lucky enough, you're still lucky enough to have won the eight grand finals as player and coach. And, and it's just the euphoria and at the time is just something you can't buy. You get, you, and you get so uh, so jealous of the team that are going to get it on on Saturday. So, no, I'm lucky to be uh, to be able to have been in a lot of good clubs. To get to, to get involved at that in the big day a dozen times. Yeah, it's just a fluke you were there at all those times. Four yeah. premierships oh, well. <laughs> as a superstar player, the player of the century, and four at uh, Collingwood, the 32-year drought breaker. Three, of course, at uh, at the, uh, the Brisbane Lions. With the connections premiership-wise with the two clubs playing on Saturday, how are you with that? And um, what will you be doing on the on the game itself? Um, I'll be watching the game this week. AW have let me have the, the call off. Jimmy and uh, Lloydie will be, uh, will be doing that. Um, well, well, I've been heavily involved with three clubs, Hawthorne, Collingwood and, uh, and, and the Lions more recently. And the club you're involved with gets everything you got. So the Lions? Yeah, because the Lions is the current club. Uh, the, what is really interesting about uh, Collingwood is uh, I mean, obviously Craig McRae and Justin Lepich and I, then I coached uh, Graham Wright and Craig Kelly and uh, of course Jeff Brown it was the person who was the conduit for me to go to the Brisbane Lions. So there's a lot of connections with Collingwood with the current people apart from the history there you know about 30 odd years ago. Speaking of connection you, you're clearly invested with the Lions but uh, are you emotionally charged now? Because obviously as a player mm. and then a coach and then you, in the media you can sort of remain a bit distant but will you sit there on the weekend and be emotionally invested? More than I want to be. <laughs> yeah. I gave up coaching in 2008 because I just didn't want to care about, I really care. I mean care like the life's going to end. You know, yeah. the game of footy is going to be the be all and end all of your existence which is what it's like playing and coaching. I never wanted to feel that again. But I found myself sucked back a little bit, uh, Jimmy, the last couple of weeks with the, uh, with the Lions surge. And uh, it's been announced this afternoon, of course, that you will present the Premiership Cup for the Lions mm. if they're good enough. I think you've seen enough of the MCG. Just <laughs> understands me, but at least that, that's sensational. Oh, it's a lovely honour that the club uh, nominated me to be their representative to present the Cup. I think Peter Moore's doing it for... Collingwood is my understanding if Collingwood wins. So, yeah, that'd, that'd be a great honour. I hope I get my hands on the cup at the end of the game, Ed. Yeah, well, it is. It's you and Maury, so yeah, there yeah. you go. Well, yeah, and if you do, you'll be presenting it to Chris Fagan. Yes. And so, you know, he's been through as tough a year as you could imagine as a coach. Yep. So, yeah, what have you been there to your player role in supporting Chris? You know, how have you seen the way he's coached in such yeah. adversity this year? Uh, well, certainly done, done our best to make sure that he knows that the club and people like myself and Greg Swan and the Andrew Well and the club in general are completely support him. And what you're talking about is the, the allegations about the Hawthorne yeah. stuff over the last 12 months. And that's been a weight on his shoulders. I've got no doubt about that. But I think he's successfully put his life into compartments. And I'd be pretty confident it hasn't affected his coaching one iota. But it certainly has been a, a load on his shoulder when you've got headlines that popped up about this time last year to do with. Well it wasn't about this time, it was actually today, Wednesday yeah. of grand final week. Yeah. Can I just get you to go back to that to yeah. that day? Um, yeah. By the end of the day and in the next 24 hours he had stood himself down and at that stage he wasn't guaranteed to coach another training session, let alone get a team to a grand final. Can I just ask you what, what you did and what the club did in that uh, initial 48 to 72 hours? Oh, I think everything went into limbo for a few weeks. I mean the, the stand down was a limbo position. Who, who knows what's going on here? So the best way to handle it is just to, for Chris to, in, in a sense, fall on his sword for a month or so. And then clearly uh, by that stage it was a bit ridiculous. I mean, Jesus, allegations, that's all they are. So get back to work and that's what eventually happened uh, maybe five, six weeks later. There's no doubt talking to the players as well as the administrators, talking to Greg Swan the other night, speaking to you, Lee, over mm. the, the last 12 months, it's galvanised the club and particularly behind the coach. Uh, it, it probably, it's just that even talking yeah. to the players, they say, yeah, we saw him really struggling and it was great to see that we helped 
helped him recover. Nor was the coach going the other way. Yeah. It just seems to be a very tight unit up there at Brisbane at the moment. Yeah, I never thought of that particular sort of slant on it, on it all. That, uh, um, but, I, but I think everyone knows Chris Fagan. Yeah. And, OK, yeah, the Chris Fagan we know, this is just... That's not the Chris Fagan we know. And that goes for the players and the, and the staff and anyone who's had anything to do with him, really. So... Oh yeah, no. It's a, everyone will be. He's hard not to be liked. He's a very likable, likable person. And uh, you, you ask as a coach, Lordy, but be, I'm not that much involved with the footy yeah. department to observe his coaching. We might talk about footy a fair bit and yeah. talk about coaching, but uh, certainly he's got the club humming. But your impact still continues in the game, of course. We mentioned with Fagan, but Vossi, uh, preliminary final for yeah. the Blues, the Scots as well. But Craig McRae, the man trying to stop you handing over that Premiership Cup. Uh, do you look back and see that coming for Craig McRae, the, all the success as a senior coach? Well, I think he and Chris Fagan are like the modern, uh, typical coach, really, in a way. I mean, well, Ron Brassley passed away, as we know, and Ron would have been the fire and brimstone, autocratic, alpha male type coach, which is what most coaches were back in the yeah. 70s and 80s. And gradually, as we've got into full-time footy this last 20-odd you know, years, the coach now has to be more like a friendly uncle school teacher not like the school principal yelling at you <laughs> and I think Chris Fagan completely he's in that category and, and Craig McRae I think he's just another another person who's very very much of the same ilk in their basic personality. Lee you made some really strong comments about the umpiring in the preliminary final and Laura yep. Kane has responded today let's take a listen to yourself and then Laura and I want to get your response. Last night's total failure to protect the player with the ball, I reckon, was appalling. There was 24 free kicks paid. Why did it happen that four of the good umpires went to a game and decided just not to pay free kicks? You probably saw the whistle go away because there wasn't anything to call it for. So we don't umpire the game differently. Laura, there's been a bit of criticism about um, protection of the ball carrier, namely from Lee Matthews after the preliminary finals. Is that something that you'll look to sort of ramp up and focus on for the grand final? Firstly, player health and safety is always a priority, but we review everything. At the end of the season, AFL, AFLW, we look at all different um, outcome situations that have occurred throughout the season and we'll certainly review things, but um, not ahead of Saturday. It was footy classified. Xander yeah. McGuire asking yeah, those questions, Lee, questions, but there. the first <laughs> response there to say we didn't see any free kicks. You must be bemused by that. Well, it was a game of trench yeah. warfare. There was about 150 tackles. There's just bodies going into packs all over the place. And there was only 24 times the umpires thought fit to blow the whistle. To me, it was, uh, it was just a low point in a trend, which is what I'm concerned about. I mean, I, maybe I've just brought up in an era where you protected the ball carrier. So for some reason or another, a few years back, it was thought, no, oh no, if he's, if he's continuing, if he's uh, like ducking a little bit or not, not, not the head first into the contact, that's dangerous for your neck, understand that. Yeah. So I reckon the umpires now, when there's a high tackle, they have to tick off about four things when, if it's a high tackle, just play them bloody free. Well, in the under and 11s, the coach, would, uh, the, oh. the umpire would come in and say, I will look after yeah. the person who goes for the ball. If you've got the Sharon, you've got the priority. Yeah. So well, you, that, that's what I believe in. Yeah. Um, but I don't think it's being umpired that way. And I'm not even concerned with the umpires. It's more the people making the decisions. The law canes now. Whoever at the top of the AFL is making the decisions and the umpires' coaches, they're telling the umpires what to do. And I think they're, uh, they've taken the game in a position that last Friday was almost like the ground zero, Yeah, I reckon. What but happens this week? So last one, do you think they'll pay them this week due to the scrutiny? Well, I think 24 free kicks, as I mean, we know that... Can you believe back in 50 years ago with one free um, where field umpire, they were playing 80 or 90 free kicks? Yeah. I, I don't know. And there was less contact. So the fact is, who knows, Lloydie? Yeah. But, I mean, 24 free kicks is an all-time low almost. I mean, these days the averages are up 35 or 40. And you only play free kick if it's there. But I just think it's the, the fact that the, it has to be like 100% high contact, not 99%, and that's what I'm concerned with. So, Lee, a, a while ago when uh, you had discussions about going on the commission, would that have been sort of your brief or, or your running ticket if you were to be on the commission to, to protect the game, the ball, the player playing the ball? Oh, well, it's, in, in any forum that I'm in, that's what I'd be pushing. Uh, but the full-timers won the sport. Boards and commissions oversee the full-timers, yeah, but the full-timers... So the full-time AFL executive, they're the people who have to be deciding on... On policy, I'm not quite sure at commission level they're going to be buying into onto philosophy type stuff, Ed. Lee, let's get back to the, the grand final. What's it like to walk onto the MCG and go, right, here we go. One game, one cup, here we go. 
You mean before the game or after? Yeah, before and after. Well, before the game, I find as a coach, uh, when the players, the game's about to start, I um, mean, the players ran out on the field and now they, they, coaches might stay on the bench, but usually you're going up to the coach's box and usually they're going out to play and I'm going up to watch. Yeah. Uh, in a way, you lose control. There's a terrible feeling of loss of control when the game's about to start from a coaching point of view, in my opinion. But on, the, on those four games where the teams I coach won the premiership, the moment when you know you're going to win might be the final siren in a close game, but the moment you think we've won this, I get goosebumps thinking about that because those four moments are the best thing I've ever experienced. And when you play, when you go out and you can influence yeah. the game, what was your determination still to resolve like going out in those games? Well, well no, it should be. No, I always tried to think every game I play was like a grand final. You shouldn't play hard, any better or try harder in a grand final than a home and away game, really. But the difference is in, in when you're playing, you're out in the middle of it involved. You know, you've got your own game and the team's going like you, you're physically doing it. But... Coaches, coaching is obviously a passive watch from the sidelines role. You, you're not out in the middle you know, as, as part of the game. Well, is one of the eight stand above the rest for you that, you know, as a player? Absolutely it does. Is, is, it, is it the 1990? <laughs> it's, it's funny, the first thing that popped into my mind was 1990. Yeah. I mean, it's more like the post part of it. I mean, just what happened when the siren went. And, yeah. When, when uh, in the last couple of minutes, when that Collingwood, Collingwood, yeah, Collingwood, we're just going to get you to cut in here, Lisa. Have yes. a look at this here. Now, Ed wants us to freeze it. Oh. <laughs> Have a look at that face between oh, yeah. your backside and uh, whoever else is walking out behind you there. But yeah, yeah, the, the, the moment and, and the feeling you've got there is yeah. that that is to Lordy's ben, point, and the was, best, the best, uh, and the, the best of the eight. And yes. Victoria, oh, well, probably. I mean, let's yeah. face it, it's a bit like. Who, which, kid, which child do you love? Yeah. I mean, it's basically, uh, well, you only had eight yeah. in my whole life. It's not as if you haven't won, you know, every six months or every month. But uh, the, maybe the first one I coached is, is the most memorable when you ask the question. And that night, Victoria Park was out of control. In fact, yeah. uh, we are laughing before. Yeah. You and I ended up in a horse and cart <laughs> going down from the Southern Cross Hotel down Burke Street to the Tunnel Nightclub. Yeah. The yeah. infamous <laughs> tunnel where a lot of our players spent a lot of time. That was my one and only visit. <laughs> <laughs> so the, what was it like that night, though, just back, back at Vic Park? It was out of control. Oh, uh, yeah, well, because of the, the numbers, you know, they're... There must have been 30,000 people. It was like a rock concert. The crowd's like going like this. You thought it'd be almost dangerous. So it was an incredible aftermath. Um, and that, that sort of, in some ways, made it even bigger. Which we don't go, Grand Finals are going to be won every year, but Collingwood hadn't won for a long time. So that whole, the whole exuberance and feeling that was created that night, you know, a really big Melbourne club, it was a really big night. Well, Lee and guys, you know, we've celebrated the profound impact of Ron Barassi in recent times, what he did at so many clubs. Have a look at Lee Matthews. He played in 1971. That was only the second premiership for Hawthorne. And look at the club they became. Came to Collingwood. I have no doubt whatsoever, Lee Matthews, and I was around in those days as a reporter, saved the Collingwood Football Club at that stage. And winning that premiership just made all the difference to the Collingwood Football Club. And then, of course, three premierships at the Brisbane Lions. Saved the Brisbane Lions. Saved the Brisbane Lions. They were a basket case beforehand. And here they are in a huge national competition. Lee, uh, your efforts have been profound in the whole game and particularly in Grand Final Week. It's been a pleasure to have you on our show. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks Ed. Thanks all.